Hello, good afternoon. Time to make stuffed jacket potatoes. So I'm coming on a minute or so earlier, just so that those of you that are not sure and are new where, we, where you find us, I'm here, I'm live, you're in the right place. So give me a wave and a thumbs up, say hello. You can do pop your name on and I will give you a shout out. Oh, we've got a lot of you already. If you can see the ingredients, that's what you're going to need for today. We're not very strict, so I know a lot of the grown-ups are going away and leaving you to it today, which is fantastic. This is a great recipe for doing that. So, hi, Ayla. Nice to see you. We've got lots of friendly faces, lots of people that have been here before. That is great to see. So, the one thing, if you've still got your grown-ups before we start, is you'll need your potatoes baked. So, these are have been in the oven and they're obviously cool enough to handle so if you haven't done that send your grown-up to go and stick them in the microwave so i've got ayla hi ria hadison's back again you got your chef's hat on today oh i have to see that you can send me a photo hi eliza and emma and ty again fantastic and amy and chloe and audrey and stella and stephanie and flavia i got that right and you and an imogen and eliza is back that's fantastic Hello, hello, Persephone. Oh, you're testing me today with all your long names. This is good, Serena, Esme from Oxford, Georgios is back, fantastic, Lucy and Sebastian, Theo, lovely, Caden, amazing to see so many of you back again. And I hope you're using some of the other recipes that have been cooking them since I saw you. Hi, Maya, that's amazing. Right, so today, hi, Ariadne, hi, Imogen. Oh, it's so nice to see you all again. Today, we're going to cook it's good, amazing for supper or tea whatever you want so your parents are going to love you because you're going to have supper sorted leo and valeria we've got beatrice and james and gabriella i don't say your name wrong i'm sorry if i said your name wrong Hi, Oliver. it's scrolling really quickly so i'm struggling to read it and shout at the same time amy and beth and zachary ah name is flavia is that right did i get that right barbara ruby and ava and emily and Ree. And Daniel, amazing, amazing, amazing. Right, so I'm gonna tell you what you need um, this afternoon to make it, and then you can get um, sorted while I get some of the other guys' uh, shout outs. So you're gonna need some jacket potatoes. I've said about six, but it really doesn't matter. You're gonna be able to scale this recipe up and down. So as long as your jacket potatoes are baked, that's good to go. You need some cheese, which we're gonna grate. So I've got a grater there. You're gonna need some butter. And if your butter is really soft, you might be able to mash it. Mine's just come straight out of the fridge. So I've got a little saucepan and I'm going to melt it. So we might melt our butter. If you don't want to melt it and you've got some oil, you can use some oil as well. I've got some milk over here. So we're going to put some milk in. And obviously all of these you can have as a free substitute. So if you've got vegan cheese or you've got um, oatly or something like that, that's pepper as well. And then over here at the front, I've got some little breadcrumbs. Now, never throw any bread away. I just whiz up some um, bread in a little processor like this. Oops. Just like this kind of thing. So if you've got a little bit of stale bread knocking around, you can do that now. If you've got ready-made breadcrumbs, you know, like Paxo crumbs or, or panko, that's also fine. And if you don't have, don't worry. Um, and then I've got some mixed seeds. I was saying pine nuts or some other seeds. Really healthy, really lovely and crunchy. And then, of course, I've got my broccoli today. So I know some of you have asked if you've got frozen. That's fine. Don't need to cook it. I'm going raw. So I'm going to show you how you can make some broccoli sprinkles because they're really fun. And then what it looks like, what we're making, are these two yummy things here. So I've made you some seeds. I lift that out. Let's see. So there's one of my halves of my stuffed jacket potatoes. So delicious. Really, really yummy. They're going to be perfect for me. Perfect. And I've just got a little baking tray to put them in in the oven. You can have a little um, Pyrex dish or something else that's also fine while the baking tray. So, who, Dante is ready, Thomas and Ed are back, you're ready, Amber's ready, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. And Alice, so I've just gone through all the things you need. So everything's here and in the front. Oh, Millie's going to do it another day. I wish you better, Millie, so I'm saying hello and you can have a little watch now and then get stuck in a bit later, okay? Um, who have I missed here? Molly, hi Molly, hi shout out to Emma, of course you can have a shout out. Hi Evie in Northumberland, amazing. Funny Moon, you always make me smile, I love that, by the little smiley things as well. Hi to Molly and Florence, do you need breadcrumbs? If you've got them, that would be great. If you've got a little bit of bread knocking around in your cupboard, you can make your own. Um, otherwise, don't worry about it. You could crumble some crackers, you could do anything like that. Quite easy, okay? So, if you guys are ready, 
So how do I get eight friends in a wash and do that? Leave it for those of you that are just tuning in. So go and wash your hands and get everything ready, and then we're ready to start. So, yes, I've got Tanya and Isla and Adriana. Are you watching? I can see the eyes there. Nancy and Oscar. Perfect. Most of you. Feedback from Harrow. Perfect. Right. So, if we're ready, we're going to do a bit of knife skills today and some grating and some mixing and mashing and all kinds of things. So actually what I didn't tell you here was you're going to need a nice fork to mash your potato unless you've got a nice big potato. Um, and I've got a nice knife to cut my broccoli and cut my jacket potatoes. And some of you might have some knives like this and they're also fine to cut your potatoes. OK, so we're going to be safe. I'm going to show you some knife skills. OK, so let's get going. So what I want to do is you want to take your potato. In half. Now I've got monster potatoes, yours might not be easy. And whenever we cut, we always choose a knife that's the right size. If you look at that, that's a bit small. My knife is smaller than my potato, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my bridge, I'm going to put my knife through, and I'm just going to chop it down the middle like that, and just open it up, okay? So you're just going to chop how many potatoes you're doing in half that way. So can you see I've done it long ways, not that, that again. Make your, make your bridge. Pop your knife like a choo-choo train through the bridge. Go down the middle. So just chop all of your potatoes in half first. That's what we're going to do. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Faye and Penny and Lee. Fantastic. It's lovely to see so many of you again. And then I've got Giselle there. And oh, here we go. Right. So all like that. Everybody good. Hi, Lucy. So it doesn't matter how many potatoes. You can see I've got three because actually I used another one here, and then mine are quite big. So whatever you want to do, have many potatoes the same, the recipe will work the same, okay? And then what you're gonna need is a little teaspoon because this is the easiest way of scooping. So this is really good practice. And what I wanna do is I wanna scoop out most of the potato, but I wanna leave like a shell, almost like a boat. So I'm gonna do it with my bowl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my spoon in, and if I just wiggle it round, and you make a nice little circle, I'll do it in that end. Can you see I'm turning it around, getting that first circle out? You can see some of those holes. And I'm just going to keep going, no rush. You're going to be really patient and just scoop out most of the potato. I'm going to tear the skin. So go slow and I'll show you one what it looks like. Hi, Claire. Hi, Thomas and Amy's mum. Are you here, Kevin? Yeah, nice. Right, let me show you. So you kind of want it like that can you see what i mean about a boat so i've got a little bit of potato left because it will give it its shape and i haven't ripped it if you rip it it's not terrible but you want to try and keep it in one piece so i'm going to do this with all of mine so i'm just going to put all of my my little teaspoon in i find a teaspoon is the easiest thing it's a really good practice and this is why you want the potatoes cooked first and so they're not too hot to hold and the, the potato is nice and soft and we can scoop it all out so you guys can keep doing it with me. If you're doing six potatoes, we could be here for a while, couldn't we? This is a really good recipe. Here we go. So there's another one of my boats. So I'm actually just going to put my boats in there for a minute so I can see where they are. And you can see how big my potato is because it's filling up that tray, isn't it? You might have smaller ones. We're very greedy here. So I know these are going to be popular and they're going to be really, really yummy for dinner. So I'm just scraping this out. So those of you that are doing it with brothers and sisters, this is a good one to do because you can have your own potato each, no fighting, huh? So let's see. So kind of like that. I've got a few more to do. And you can see my bowl is filling up with potato that I'm going to mash in a minute. This is a good muscle workout today. Turning it round. And there's another one. So you can see I've got a little hole. Can you see there? I've made a little hole. But it doesn't matter. As long as it holds together and I'm going to be able to stuff it, that's what I want to do. They're a bit like taco shells, really, aren't they? So that's the thing that we're going for today. Oh, good. I'm getting lots of thumbs up. So that's good. I know that you're doing it. Easy peasy, isn't it? 
right. Nearly there. But I might even be slower than you today. We'll see how we're going. Hi, Alexandra. So there's another one. There's another one of my boats. And oops, from the potato away. And then my last one, I'm just going to do this. So I always think it's a really good idea if you've made jacket potatoes like you've made too many this is a really good thing to do or if you know you want to make this when you've got the oven on for something else just stick some potatoes in because you can keep them like this cool in the fridge I did mine yesterday and I just put them in the fridge and then you're ready to go so you don't have to waste any heat in the oven you can just do it at the same time as you're cooking something else so there's my last one okay so all of my skins looking like boats kind of like oh they're a bit rolling aren't they because I haven't filled them up yet but like that okay Hi, Jaden. It's not breaking. Perfect, Natalia. You're doing very well. Amazing, amazing. So, I think you guys are going to be with me because I was a bit slow in that. So, you can give me hi, Val. So, you can give me a little thumbs up. And I'm just going to show you some of you will be at the same stage. If you're a little bit behind, don't worry. And then all you're going to do is take your fork and you're just going to, you're just going to squish it against the side of the bowl. And you can see already how lumpy mine is because it's just in those great big chunks that I just took out. And so I want to make it like mashed potato. You just start to mash it. If you hear that little noise. Oh, lots of thumbs, that's good. Hi, Ria. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Isabel and Olivia. I've got Flory Flory. Is that <laughs> Flory Flory from York? He's happy to be back a second time. Well, it's lovely to have you, sweetheart. It's nice. And Belle, I've said hello to, and Jaden, I think we've got everybody there. I'm just scrolling. Right. So this is good for the arm workout. And if you're doing this with brothers and sisters at home, let's see who's got the best lump-free mashed potato. Okay. It's harder to mix potatoes cold, isn't it? It's easier to scoop it out when it's cold, but a bit harder for mashing, okay? So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to show you what's going to make it easier butter. Oh, that's a bit thick. So, hi, Grace and, Grace and Bethan are being helped by Big Brother Matthew. Fantastic. Well, Mummy and Daddy are working. Are they working or they're putting their feet up and having a cup of tea? So, that's good. You've made supper. Well done. Well done, Matthew, for being a superstar helper. So, what I'm going to finish up mashing this, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is take some of my butter and I'm just going to melt it because that's going to be much easier because my butter is very hard. So, if you've got a bit of butter, I said on my thing about 85 grams, but just take a little wodge. If you're not doing as many potatoes as me, just a little bit. And I'm going to put it on and then we're going to melt it. And because the butter is warm, it's going to help us mash our mashed potatoes. OK, put that in the bin. Hi, Tahara. I hope I've got that right. Hi from Ibrahim. Lovely. Good to hear. Good to hear. And so if you guys have got a microwave, because you'll know I cook most things in the oven, because I think it's better, but for this kind of thing, for jacket potatoes, if you wanted just to microwave them so they're soft, you can do that. Not the problem. But we will bake them in the oven, because that's when they get nice and crispy, and that's why I like the oven better. And I've got Sebastian, and I did I do Nancy and Oscar, amazing. Right, so hopefully everybody's scooped now, and if you've got butter that you need to melt, melt it. And I'll show you why I've still got some lumps in my mashed potato. Some of you might have seen there's a gadget we might use another time called a potato ricer, where you push it in and you squeeze it out through some holes, a bit like a sieve. Cuts super, super fine, like rice. So no lumps at all. I can hear my butter sizzling. That's nice. So what do they taste like, Rachel? They taste amazing. It's like really yummy cheese potato with some broccoli in there. Crunchy nuts and seeds and um, and, and breadcrumbs on the top, yummy. Hi, Irina. So, Sarah, I put in about 85 grams of butter, but just cut a little kind of wodge off the end of your um, butter in your butter dish. You don't need a lot. It depends how many um, potatoes you're doing. So, and you can do it by eye. So, if I show you, I haven't melted all of my butter at the moment. You can see there, I've got some in there. So just some melted butter in and because it's warm what it's going to help me do it looks like quite a lot I know I'm going to leave that extra there because we might not need all of it um, it's going to help me mash my mashed potatoes so go slow when the butter goes in 
and you see there it looks a bit like a butter slick at the top and you could use oil if you don't want to melt anything just use a bit of oil that would be fine too and it's just going to help us mash up that potato make it really nice and soft okay so hi Emily so you can see it gets a lot easier now doesn't it a lot easier and I might put a bit more of my butter in too so normally when you make mashed potato that in. Um, your potato would be warm and then everything dissolves and you can, don't need to melt butter but we're doing it the opposite way around we've got cold potato and hot butter today so i put some butter in there and then what i'm going to do as well is i'm going to take some milk so if you've got some milk just add a bit in and this is quite fun to do because it looks like i've got a lot of milk i'm just going to start with a bit like that and you're going to think oh no there's way too much milk and but mashed potato is like a sponge so see how much it soaks up and how quickly you'll be really surprised you want to make it nice and loose it's not so stiff now can you see i'll show you that the potatoes are smashed with butter you have absolutely done it Madonna. sorry you're in the right place so just like that so i've got some butter in there some milk in there and you can just keep adding a little bit so if you wanted a bit more butter put a bit more butter in there finishing that off and you want a bit more milk that would be good and what you'll see is quite interesting i said it's a bit like a sponge mashed potato is it will look really soft and we'll put it on one side for a minute and then it will start getting a bit thicker again okay so i'm just going to mash all of mine in and any of you that want to do salt and pepper now is a good time to put some salt and pepper in as well so i'm going to do that so I pop a bit of pepper. Hi, Liam and Amidala, have I got that right? Lots of you. Yeah, Ed's got butter in. So I'm just putting a bit of butter, no, a, bit of butter a bit of salt and pepper, like that. And there is my mash, okay. So it's not completely lump-free and it's fine because little bits are okay. So it's that sort of consistency, okay. How are we doing? I'm going to put that to one side for a moment while I wait for some thumbs up so that I know you guys are good to go. Okay, hi Esme. Lovely to have all of you guys here with me today. And I know a lot of you are watching on replay, so hello if you're watching as well. Um, you can add a bit of salt and pepper if you want to, just a little grind. You don't have to, I don't always season my food. So today it might be a bit nice. And then what you're going to want to do is go and grab your cheese and your grater and we're going to grate all of our cheese. Now, I said about 175 grams of cheese and that's mostly because I work with cheese monsters. So if you like cheese, then this is a good thing to do. So most of it is going to go in with our potatoes. Some's going to go on top. Right. So when we grate, we're going to keep our fingers. We've got a big block like this. Keep it this way, not that way. So your fingers are well away. From that. You've got <coughs> excuse me, one of the ones like that. Make sure your fingers are also away from the side. So you just want to grate as much as you can into your grater, or if it's coming out of a, put it in a bowl. Oh, lots of lovely love hearts, I love that. And I've got a thumbs up. Oh, I'm like, oh, that is so nice, Ashley. I think you're probably the best cook, aren't you? What do you think? I think we'll ask mom and dad later and see what they think. So, hi everybody, hi Rachel. Hi again from Ruby and Daisy, that's great. So I'm keeping going with this. And when you get to the end, can you see how my hand is flat? So I don't want to hold it like that and grate my fingers. So that's why I always give too much cheese, because I'd rather you ate the last bit. We don't want any grated fingers, do we? No. So I would definitely not be the best cook ever if I grated fingers, would I, actually? That would not be good. So I'm just doing the last bit as much as I can. And if you've got a bit like that, just leave it and just eat it, OK? I'm going to put all of those bits in there. So I'm grated, we've got lots of stars and love and things today. So I think most of you are nearly there, it's super quick. We're getting quicker because we're practicing and that is what's so great. So what I'm gonna do is I've most of my cheese in here, not all of it, it does look amazing, doesn't it, Helen? Honestly, this is so simple and so lovely and I'm gonna show you, give you um, some suggestions for how you can vary it. So I want enough cheese to sprinkle on, oh, on the top like this afterwards so I get that nice golden crust. So I'm gonna back, but I'm gonna put most of it in here. So that's up to you how much cheese you like on the top. So I'm going to keep that sort of amount left. I'm putting most of it in here. Hi, Nathan and Sinead. And I'm just going to stir that in now because now that our 
mashed potato is nice and soft, look how much easier it is to stir in. And if it's getting a bit thick now and you're thinking, hmm, needs a bit of a loosen up, that's why you've got some milk. So just keep adding milk. So it's really good for you, this, because we've got, we're going to have lots of vegetables. We've got calcium from our milk and from our cheese. We're going to have lots of nice protein from the seeds. It's all yummy. So all my cheese has kind of disappeared and it's got stuck into my mashed potatoes. So that's what you want. You can see it, but it's kind of in there. It's not, um, not loose. It's all stuck in the glue of the mashed potato. Right, so I'm going to wait for you to do that, and then it's going to be time for some chopping of our broccoli. Now, the frozen broccoli, you're going to do the same thing. It's going to be really easy. Um, be but need to cook it, and some of you might have a nice broccoli tree like me. Okay, it does look good, doesn't it? So, give me some thumbs up if you're ready to go with our chopping. If you've got your nice mashed potatoes, so in a bowl, you basically got all of the potatoes that we scooped out of the skins. A bit of butter or some oil, some milk, maybe some salt and pepper, and then you put most of your grated cheese in here, leaving a nice little bit for the top, okay, for later. So put that to one side, especially if you're working with cheese monsters, okay? Good. So we're all good. You've got 12 kids. <laughs> 12 kids, that's an awful lot of potatoes. That might be half a potato. This is like maths, to maths and time, isn't it? So I said six potatoes. So six potatoes with a couple and a half makes 12, so everybody can have a half. Good. Thumbs up. Now, I want to show you something before we start. So a lot of people throw this bit. This is like a tree, isn't it? Like a broccoli tree. And this is the stalk or the, the trunk. My nice little branches on the top. So most people don't use this, but I want to show you you can. So if you've got probably a sharper knife. So I'm just going to cut off that trunk at the top there. And then it's got something that does it at the bottom. So I want to cut the top and cut the bottom. And you might need a bit of help to do this. But I want to show you what I do. So you stand it up. Remember, we always stand on the flat. I don't want it wobbling around for me. And I'm just going to put my fingers on one side, take my knife and cut way down, cut all those knobbly bits. I'm going to do that all the way around like that. All the way around. And it looks completely different now, doesn't it? Look at this. I don't know if anybody's eaten the broccoli stalk before. It's so good and it's really yummy. It's different. So that's my kind of broccoli stalk, and now I can just hold it like that, and I can just cut slices. So if you've got this at home, I want you to have one of these slices. Give them, they're really super crunchy. Tastes amazing. So if you're doing a stir fry or something, chop these up and put them in, okay? I'm not going to put them in here because they're a bit big today, but don't waste them, eat them, okay? <laughs> hmm. Bacon is perfect. You can do bacon and broccoli. So you can add whatever you like in. And you can also add some eggs in if you want to. So you could just crack an egg, kind of scramble it a bit, mix it up a bit with the fork, and then just pour it in, <coughs> excuse me, with the mashed potato, and it kind of bakes, and that makes it extra nutritious. For vegans cooking, so I'm going to do too many things today. So, yeah, okay. Oh, sister's watching in Singapore. That is amazing. Cool. Hello, Singapore. Right. So... With these stalks, what we want to do is you can pull them off with your hands. So muscles, so pull off a few little broccoli like this. Hopefully you've washed the broccoli. And if you've got frozen bits, don't worry, you'll just be able to do this. So you can just use as much or as little as you want, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and cut them and make what I call broccoli sprinkles. So you know when we have cupcakes, we have sprinkles on the top, we're going to have broccoli sprinkles on the top of here, okay? You're using spinach, also great, but I'm going to show you how we do the broccoli. So we hold it like this, we want to cut down the middle just like we did before, pop it on the flat, and then I want to cut it into cuts. Every time I'm turning it down, so I'm always cutting on the flat so it doesn't wobble and I don't get my fingers in the way. I'm just cutting them into little pieces, sort of bite-sized pieces. And when they're in bite-sized pieces, I don't want that leaf, I'm going to be able to chuck those little pieces. You can make them a bit smaller. I might make mine a bit smaller. So remember, like a bridge. Um, you don't have any broccoli, so you can put any other vegetables in that you want. We've got some people using spinach today. We've got some people using bacon. Just because you see it. Or maybe yellow, so you could do some little peas or some sweet corn if you've got any of that in tins. It doesn't matter. Next time you can do it. Okay. So I'm going to pop all of those in there. And what you'll see is on my board, I've got left, can you see, broccoli sprinkles. So usually what I do is I put my sprinkles to one side because I get them every time I chop. 
I'm just going to chop the rest. Remember, make your bridge, cut down through the middle, pop it on the flat, and then see if you can just cut some little slices and make those little pieces of broccoli quite small. And then they can go in your pot with the mashed potato, like that. And then what's left on your board are going to be the sprinkles. I Hi, Rosie. Lovely to have you. Hi, Mai. You're using onion and red pepper and bacon. Oh, nice, Maria. That sounds a good combo. And it's nice because you can see them all. But any time you can just change this recipe up, and this is why it's good. A bit like our frittatas, you remember, that we made last week. You can use like, whatever you've got around. If you've kind of had a big roast dinner or something, you've got lots of leftover veggies, you can use those. So no, especially now. So we can use all of those things and pop them in frittatas or in our jacket potatoes, whatever we're making. Okay. Yep, Fiona, you can put bacon in it, whatever you do. So I'm just making my little bridge. So I don't have fingers and I'm just cutting these into little pieces. Because we're going to stuff the potatoes back up. So I don't want a massive piece. Like if I had a piece like a bit hard, so I want them small, okay? And you can just do, I've given you a rough idea. So for six potatoes, I think I said about 400 grams of broccoli. So that was kind of like a head. That's what we call it, one head of broccoli. But what you're going to do is when you put all your bits in there, you can give it a bit of a stir and see just by eye whether you feel you need a bit more or a bit less. And I can see now those lovely sprinkles going in there. They look great. Like spotty dotties. So this is a good one. You're using great. And chop chorizo. Oh, nice. Hi, Lily. So if I do this, you'll see I'm going to put all of my sprinkles. Normally I sprinkle them on the top. But if I do it here where I've done my mashed potato, you'll be able to see that. Can you see those little dots? And it looks really cool. So for those of us that think we don't like broccoli, which I'm sure isn't anybody, you can put some little sprinkles in on the top or maybe in the middle and see if you can find them when they bake. They're tiny. And so now it's getting a little bit stiffer, so I might think maybe I'll add a bit more milk. So it's up to you. You can add a bit more milk too if you want to. Just so it's easy to stir. Hi from Bella. And hi from Florence. Perfect. It's lovely that you guys are joining me today. So you can just add a bit more if you want to, however much you want to do, really. I think for me that's good. So basically, whatever filling you're doing, just shove it all in there and give it a stir. Remember, the mashed potato is kind of like glue. So I want it all stuck in there like that, basically. That's what we want, okay? So I'm going to pop that to one side. And I can see on my table I've got lots of little broccoli sprinkles. So I'm just going to give a little clean up while you guys finish up with that. And then the fun part comes. We're going to start stuffing them. So is everybody good? Give me some little thumbs up and some love hearts and some little smiley faces if we're all good and ready to go. How are we doing? It's all gone quiet. Are we still mixing? Mummy's being mean to me. Oh, what is mummy doing? If mummy's being mean, tell her she can't have any delicious stuffed jacket potatoes. I say, tell mommy, you know what you should tell mommy is you are a very good cook and tell her she can go and sit to one side and have a cup of tea and put her feet up and relax while you make stuff. How about that? That sounds, as a mummy, that would sound very good to me. Okay. I've got lots of hearts there. So maybe, maybe to the other mummies that sounded good. Right. So if you've got your mix, whatever was in your mix, you play with your shells. Do you remember our boats? And what you're going to do, you can use the little teaspoon you had last time or a bigger spoon. This is just a tablespoon. So just something I have. That we eat with and you're going to fill them up and it's a bit remember we've added a bit more in so it will be a bit to fill them up because you'll think oh i've got a lot of filling where did that come from so i would fill them about flat like that so that we can share all the filling out between them and then if i've got a bit extra then i'm going to put that on the top so just fill them out and this is why you can see now you don't want to make a hole in your boat because you want to be able to hold them but when you fill them, they become much more solid and they stand up. It's super easy, okay? So let's fill up our shells. It doesn't need to be super neat either, don't worry about it. Right. You've never eaten the stalk. It's perfect, Ria. That's the, that's the best bit. Don't tell mommy and daddy. They're delicious, aren't they? And you know what I like to do? I like to do, I often do a little gaming class where we, we do a little blindfold test. So if you've been on an airplane and you've got those nice little eye masks, you can use those. 
And then I get so we put all the vegetables out on a tray. And so then I say, now I'm going to let you try with your eyes shut. And what is it? And nobody ever guesses that it's broccoli because it doesn't look and feel like broccoli, does it? And it is delicious. So if you have a lot of stir fries, often that's what's in there. So I'm so glad that you like that and you're not going to throw that away anymore. That is fantastic. Well done, Ria. And those of you that are not great big broccoli fans at the moment, my magic word is yet. So if you're not a broccoli fan yet, I want you to put some broccoli sprinkles in and see what you think about broccoli sprinkles. Right, so you can see this one, I'm filling up a bit more because I've got a little bit left over. I'm just going to share out all of my potato. I'm going to make it even so we don't fight when we have this for supper tonight. Let's do that. And I like to put it in a nice kind of tight dish like this so that they could all be nestled up against one another and they're not going to fall over. So if I show you what I've got. Put that away. Right. So that's what mine look like. So they're all kind of in a tray. They're all shoved up tight together. And they all look gorgeous, don't they? And you can see those little dots. Those are my broccoli sprinkles right on the top, okay? So, oh, I've got a little nice little smiley face with a nice little, mm, yum, it is. Right, so that is what we've got. So if everybody's good and in their trays, then what you need to have with you, the grated cheese that hopefully you haven't eaten that we put to one side before, gonna need some seeds, because I think they're very good. So I said pine nuts in there, I had a mixed bag, but whatever you've got is really yummy. And I've got some breadcrumbs. So these are just breadcrumbs, and I suggest you do this. When you get a little bit at the end of the bread and you don't want it, maybe it's a bit stale, just whiz it up in a little food processor like this one, and then just put it in a little bag in the freezer, and it will stay there for ages, and I've just taken it out of the freezer, and I'm going to use it today, so don't waste anything, okay? Thumbs up from Emily, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop, because I like to have cheese on the top so it all goes golden. So I'm going to take some of my seeds, so I'm going to put them in my hand, and I'll see if you guys know what these ones are. So I've got these big green ones. You can see that one. They're from my Halloween vegetable. Do you know where they come from? They're my pumpkin seeds. And then I've got these ones that you might start to be growing now in the garden. A bit difficult to hold that one. They're sort of light, I guess, brown, grey. And they're sunflower seeds. And then I've got lots of little linseeds. So I'm just going to give a little sprinkle all over mine. And that sticky potato is like glue now. So everything is going to stick to it, which makes it really easy. So if you've got pine nuts, you can do that because I know some people can't have all kinds of nuts. With seeds. So whatever ones you can have, best me seeds, it really doesn't matter. But nuts are super healthy for us. So it's good to have them and a bit of a crunch as well. So, but a bit of a mess, as you can see, I've dribbled them all over the table. Let me take that out of the way. And then I will show you what now. So I've just got some seeds on the top of mine, okay? It does look good, doesn't it? Pine nuts are yummy, Molly. Now what I should say with pine nuts, pine nuts are super yummy when they're toasted. But because this is going in the oven, that's why we don't need to toast them. And that's why I put my seeds on first, because if I put them right at the top, sometimes they get a bit burnt in the oven and they're yummy, but not quite as yummy. So I'm going to do my seeds first, and then I'm going to take some of my breadcrumbs. So I'm just going to open my bag. And if you haven't got any breadcrumbs, like I said, you can just whiz them up now if you want to. You could crumble up some crackers. If you've got any panko crumbs, they're the Japanese really um crunchy crumbs that come in a packet, you can use those, or if you've got like a Paxo bread stuffing, you can use that as well. Or anybody that had Passover last week could use a bit of matzo meal too. So I'm just gonna give a little sprinkle over the top. It's a bit like playing hide and seek, so you can try and cover your seeds if you want. And this goes really crunchy in the oven too, it's nice. I like using this on pasta bakes as well. So, oh, I've got some thumbs up there, we're liking this, good. And then the last thing to do, is with your cheese, and I make a lot, is you can do a nice bit of cheese on the top. And the only thing I do with the cheese is afterwards, I just give it a little pat down, because I want it sticking to the potato. I don't want it falling off in my tray, because otherwise it will just catch it. So you've got quite a lot of mash left over. Just pile it up, just spread all of the mash out. You could just bake it as it is if you want to, but I would just pile it up. You probably That probably means that you've put, um, you've scraped a lot of the potato out, which is great, but you've put a lot of filling in too. So 
I know you always think, when, I, when you do it, you always think like, why didn't it go back in? I scooped the potato out, why is it not got back in? But remember, you've put in a lot of broccoli in or whatever you've used, okay? So, I would just pile it up, don't waste it. Okay, so I've just given them a little pat down. Those are mine, can you see? So they look quite nice, don't you think? I think they look lovely. So um, that's what you want to do. And then if you want to eat them straight away, you could, I mean, you could eat them straight away because everything's cooked in here, um, but you really want to warm them up. And I suggest putting them in the oven. So about 20 minutes, like I said, I think I've put said, what should I say here, about 200, whatever, whatever else you're eating tonight, if the oven's on, just put them in there. And they'll go like this. They'll get really nice and crunchy on the outside. They'll get lovely and golden. All those breadcrumbs and those seeds be delicious, okay? But I'm not going to eat mine right now. So what I'm going to do is pop this into the fridge. So I suggest you do that with yours because you've got cheese like that. And then just cook them fresh later when you want them, whatever supper is, okay? So when do you put the breadcrumbs in? Edward, I just put my breadcrumbs on top. So I did seeds, breadcrumbs, and then cheese. But it really doesn't matter. Um, I just don't normally put the seeds on the top because they can burn after about 20 minutes in the oven, all right? So you can do that. So you are good to go. So let me know what you put you know how yummy they were um because i think this is a great recipe they do look lovely don't they in a really great way of trying lots of different things you can kind of put different bits in there a bit like russian roulette and see who's got the potato with the sweet corn or the potato with the broccoli or whatever it is so i'd love to hear what you guys did um so yeah so well done so it just goes in the oven for 20 minutes that's all you need to do you are done and in the meantime if you're not baking them pop this straight in the fridge and then I will see you again on um, Saturday, where we're going to be making pineapple upside down cake, which is going to be amazing. And obviously, as ever, share with me all your photos. Let me know how you get on this evening when you cook them and how yummy they are. Send me pictures of your chef, especially those of you in the chef's hats. I want to see that. And um, thank you again for cooking with me. Enjoy the rest of the sunshine this afternoon. Bye.